Hello guys, welcome back. Whenever I create the RAG implementations video, many of you mentioned in the comment section that please can you show me how to do the same thing without using the open AI model so that you don't need to pay anything, right? Yeah, let's use this private GPT, which uses the open source models and you can run the application completely locally without even having the internet connection once you download the models i will demonstrate you how to do that i have already created two different videos like you can see here six and seven months before about private gpt when it was introduced and now they have revamped the or let's say updated the uh, repository and it's really good by the end of the video you will see the similar looking ui where you can just have a normal LLM chat applications, meaning that you can just say here and say hi and it will reply you normal like chat GPT. You can upload the files. Uh, for example, here I'm uploading create Lama React deploy parcel. You can ask the questions from this one and the LLM will reply you the answer. And let's say that you just want to have or know what are the different things related to each author in the in the quadrant vector sorts, let's say. If you type your apple, it will show you what are the different places where it finds the apple. Meaning that just the just the semantic source things. There are three different things. One is the normal chat. One is the rag applications, and the third one is not the whole rag application, but just the semantic source from that vector data. Let's get started. This is the GitHub repository of private GPT, and then there is this documentation links also here. If you want to follow the previous version of this private GPT where LangChain was used and in this case they are using Llama index. I will show you what are the different things used once I go through the through the implementation process but there is this primordial version that is the initial version which I demonstrated in my earlier videos. In this video I will not go in in depth what is it and how things are done because the documentation is quite well documented and the good part here is that as you can see here, private GPT in, uh, provides an API containing all the building blocks required to build private context aware AI applications. And it says here it follows and extends the open AI API standard and supports both normal and streaming responses, right? And the good part here is also that if you use the open AI API in one of your tools, you can use your own private GPT API instead with no code changes and for free if you are running private GPT in the local mode. So let's say that you are using this private GPT to create your applications locally. The API is so well documented and so well formatted that you can just completely swap with OpenAI API. I'm not going to go in that direction because in this video, I'll just show you how to set up the environment. But, but what I was trying to say you is, if you want to go and create, let's say, a production ready applications, you need to at least go through in depth of this documentation as well as the video that I am going to provide you in the link. This is from the Llama Index, they created the webinar. I will just walk you through this first before I go and show you how to install this, right? They have explained about uh, what is the project nowadays and also what are the potential use cases for this private GPT to being used, right? And then the architecture for extensibility, how you can extend this, right? There is this router, services, components kind of things. As you can see, it is well structured. And also there is this private setups, how you can do that, as well as the private GPT future. And this is what make me create this video because they said that, as you can see, there are many things that is going to be in the future. And they said that they are going to create a product out of this private GPT. And the good part there is that whatever they are going to provide in the production or let's say in the commercial version, it is going to implement it in the private GPT first. Meaning that if you are using this, you get that same, let's say, feature in the open source version. This is really good approach because if, if you want to maintain the repository, the good idea is to make that in the production and make it commercialized, right? That it is always updated. And by the way, it is also updated. As you can see here, if you go to this um, GitHub repository, it is updated four days ago. And last week, two months, three days, meaning that they are constantly making this private GPT more and more user friendly and more and more robust. I will provide all the relevant links in the description of the video. You can just quickly go there and then do the research or study by yourself.
Now let's go through the documentation. There are two ways how you can do this. One is the quick start installation. That is what I'm going to show you. And there is this installation section also. Let me first open this quick start. If I go here, as you can see here, that this is some of the code that helps us to uh, spin up the private GPT UI in our local machine. But there are some of the requirements here. As you can see, there is 3.11 Python things, right? For that, what I recommend you to do is click this installation section. If you go here, some of the things that you need to know in the beginning is shown here. And there are some of the prerequisites, meaning that you should have at least Python 3.11. And for that, if you download Python 3.11, that's enough. You don't even need to go through this PyENV or Conda kind of things because if you have Python, let's say 3.9, for example, I want to show you in my terminal. If I go here and type Python and if I do version, I have Python 3.9.16, but I have already installed the uh, PyENV. If I do PyENV and just do the version for you now, I have 2.3.21. Let's say that I want to switch from 3.9.16 to 3.11. I have already installed 3.11. How to install that is also shown here, right? You can just use PyENV install 3.11. I already have that 3.11. How to activate that is if you just go here, you can just do PyENV and there is two things, global and local. If I do local 3.11, then it will be 3.11. Let's say I use local 3.11 and now if I again run the Python version you can see it is now 3.11.4 that is how easily you can switch between different Python versions you can follow the actual documentation for that now let's follow the step-by-step -step things how to set up the environment right I'm going to follow the quick start as you can see here it says git clone this repository and cd inside I will I will actually follow step-by-step -step instead of copying all the things at all right I will just go and git clone control c i will go to the terminal i will do control v it says git clone this and i want to go inside the private gpt right i will run this one it is cloning that i'm already inside here if i do ls dash g as you can see here there are different things inside this right but what is the next step we need to create the virtual environment we already have python 3.11 as you can see i have already mm, changed to python 3.11 I will now copy all the things until the setup. I will do control C. I will go back to the terminal and then here I will do control V. There are many things happening here. First, it is creating a virtual environment. As you can see here, Python 3.11-mvenv.venv. And then it is activating the virtual environment. And then it is installing poetry and all the necessary packages for us. If I run this now, it will do all the necessary things that it needs to do in order to set up the environment meaning that once this is done what we can do is launch the private gpt api server and the gradio ui now you know that it is also using the gradio when that is being installed behind the scene i just i will just show you the different things here let's say that you want to know what is the api reference you just click on the api reference as you can see here there are contextual completions, there is context chunks, there is injection, embeddings, health checkup, and so on. If you want to know what is the health of your application, there is already your API for that. You can just go here and just play around with this. There is this manuals which shows you all the different things. What is the storage, vector store. As you can see here, the quadrant is being used by default. You can quickly switch between different things. And then there is LLM backends. There are different things that is mentioned here and by default actually it is using mistral 7b you can just go through the the project and inside the settings for example i can just show you from this github repository also because you don't even need to open this in the vs code for now just to show what it is there right if you go to the settings.ml file this is the main place where you can change different things here as you can see here there are different things mentioned here and if you scroll down here there is this maximum number of tokens context window you can change just from here you don't you don't need to go to the source code and do all the different things and there is this tokenizer being used and as you can see here this is this quadrant being used you can change with other also and here is this local as you can see here in prompt style it is using llama 2 and there is this hugging face uh, link being provided here 
and it is using mistrol, not mixtrol, but mistrol 7b. And then there is this hugging face link being shown here, and the embedding is BAAI, right? Meaning that everything is open sourced being used here. Now, if I go to the terminal, as you can see here, now it is installing the models. It will take some time in order to install all the different things, and this is one time job. It will take some time in the beginning, but once this is done, you don't need to do this again. Meaning that once the installation is completed, we can uh, be offline and then also use these applications. I will show you also that later, but as you can see, it is taking some time because it needs to install many things behind the scene. If you have installed something from Hugging Face, you know uh, it needs to install different things in order for the things to work, right? Now this model is Mistral 7B and it is 4.37 GB. Now as you can see here, it says setup is all done, right? And I will clear the screen here. The next step that we need to do is these two steps, right? First, we need to launch the private GPT API server. And then next one is to open that in our local machine. I will just copy this one, copy, go to the terminal. And here I will just paste this and I will then open a new terminal here and then I will just go to the documentation and copy this in the it says here in another terminal create a new browser window I will just copy this and go back to the terminal and control V enter which opens new tab but now it is not still showing because the first command that we run needs to be completed now if we re reload this we see the Gradio UI of private GPT. And now if I go to the terminal, this is the second terminal that we open, but there is this first terminal here. As you can see here, now it is loading and it is requesting something. Whenever we do something in the UI, everything is reflected here. We can come back and see what is the response being shown here. Right, so now let me go to the UI. This is the UI. As I said to you before, also, there is this mode, query docs, where you can query, meaning that this is if you upload something, you can query from here. Source in the docs, meaning that this is the vector source that we can do uh, from the document that we uploaded. And this is this LLM chat, meaning that we can have a simple conversation with Mistral 7B. That's just the simple chat or LLM chat. For example, let me say that I do here hi. It will respond same like in chat GPT. It will say hi, but now it is Mistral 7B using, right? Hello. How may I assist you today? And all the different things. Meaning, by the way, I'm using a MacBook M2, 24 GB RAM, and this is the speed that it is showing. It, it might differ uh, upon your machine. And now you can just go here and try different things. You can retry, undo, clear the screen, and so on. This is good looking UI. Now what I will do is upload something. I will upload one file that I used to upload in my previous videos also about this create llama. As you can see here, now it is being processing and I uploaded this create llama react deploy virtual dot pd. Uh, yeah. But just to show you one example here, I am uploading the transcript of one of my video where there is the information about create llama CLI2. I am now in the LLM chat. Just to show you, if I go here and ask what is create Llama, it will not know what is create llama and it will say okay create llama is not a widely known term or acronym that i am familiar with and these things because this thing just evolved recently and this this mistral 7b does not have the information about this it just provides some random information but what if i go now to the query docs because i uploaded the file here and now i can ask the same question i will just paste here now it should know the answer because now I, I'm using the query docs, meaning that it is going to the document I uploaded. Based on the context provided in the video transcript, create llama appears to be a command line a tool used for creating llama index applications. It now goes through these documents and provide the answer and as well as it shows the sources for us also, right? And one thing what we can do now is source in the docs. I'm just showing you here because now if I ask the same question, create what is create llama, it will just provide you the instant answer here. Meaning that it is just doing the vector source, but it is not going through the LLM things. That vector source is quite fast here. When I asked what is create llama, it just goes through this and provides. By the way, it 
must not be what is create lama you can just say here let's say apple because i have something related apple in this uh, create lama react deploy pdf file if i do apple as you can see here it directly goes into the uh, vector search and then find the answer because i have there the price of 5 kg apple and orange is 20 euro and 25 euro respectively it just goes there and find that piece of information for us right that's really good now just to show you that it runs now without the internet ss also what i will do is i will turn off the wi-fi just to show you that it is turned off i will go here refresh the page there is no internet connection right now i will go to this page again i will again refresh the page this is the local host right now there is no internet connection but if i go to this llm chat i can just query as normal i can say hi it will provide the answer because it does not need the internet connection for us to work now because all the models are being downloaded and we can use it locally uh, without the internet connection also i can just go to this query docs i can say okay now i can ask what is the price of 5 kg of apple because i have provided that as you as i just demonstrated you according to the context provided the price of 5 kg of apple is 20 euro and it is even showing also from where it is taking the information from and I can just go to the source docs, copy this, go here, control V, and then yeah, it is showing. I hope you get the idea how private GPT works, get all the answers, how to use the open source models, how to use the RAG applications locally, have the good looking UI and so on. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.